do today is look at a few very select research articles in regard to non-drug treatments of NAFLD, otherwise known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What I will do is give you the public release title of each research article and go through a synopsis of that research very rapidly. So please forgive me, I will be speaking kind of fast, a lot of territory to cover in just a few minutes. So let us begin. Vitamin E helps diminish fatty liver disease in children and adults, reduced death of liver cells. The synopsis is quite amazing, so please bear with me. Using liver biopsies, researchers found that after 96 weeks of treatment, 58% of the children on vitamin E no longer had NASH, compared to 41% of the children on metformin. Yes, you heard right, vitamin E blew away prescription drug and 28% on placebo. Vitamin E was better than placebo because it significantly reduced enlargement and death of liver cells. The protocol was as follows. The children received either 500 milligrams of metformin, 400 IUs of natural form vitamin E or placebo twice a day for two years. At that 58% success rate, that's pretty complete success rate. That's pretty phenomenal. Next one. Next one we're looking at was actually an animal study. However, it's still worthy of note. Let's look into it. Dietary medium chain triglycerides prevent non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The synopsis, Dr. Martin Ronus, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and colleagues using an animal model of NAFLD have shown that substitution of saturated fat in the form of medium chain triglycerides, sounds complex, but keep in mind MCTs you can find in health food stores. It's a large component of coconut oil, so it's not that tough to find. But proceed forward, replaced MCTs for polyunsaturated fats, which can prevent the progression of NAFLD associated liver injury. As pointed out by Ronos and colleagues, this provides potential future therapy for NAFLD where we simply alter our cooking oils to contain therapeutic levels of MCTs. Again, not that exotic, very easy to find. However, an animal study needs to be carried over to humans. Please keep that in mind. Next, new study indicates that exercise improves non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Short duration of exercise, incredible results. The synopsis, all three groups, keep in mind, different exercise groups of different types of aerobic, high intensity, low intensity, they found that didn't make much of a difference. But I digress to proceed. All three groups, irrespective of the exercise regimen, showed improvement in liver fat of about 18 to 29% from the average baseline 7.5% compared with placebo group in which liver fat increased an average of 14%. Yes, you heard right. After eight weeks of exercise, at 18 to 29% improvement, the couch potatoes which sat around did nothing, which is called a control group, actually gained 14% more liver fat. Unbelievable. But the improvement was independent of weight loss. There were no significant differences between the various aerobic exercise regimens and reducing liver fat over an eight week period. Meaning as long as they exercised about 45 to 60 minutes of some sort of aerobic activity, they got phenomenal results. All right, next one is speculative. Meaning they still have to go into a little further research, just animal models or whatever, but it holds a lot of promise. And the best way to describe it is a correlation. We're not showing a direct causation as of yet. But however, go forward. Low carbohydrate diet burns more excess liver fat than low calorie diet. You Southwestern study finds. Synopsis. Energy production is expensive to the liver, Dr. Browning said. It appears that for people on a low carbohydrate diet, the low carbohydrate was really, in many of these studies, about 40 to 45% of the total caloric intake. That's not really low carb, it's just kind of like less carb. In order to meet that expense, the livers have to burn excess fat. Results indicate that patients on the low carbohydrate diet increased fat burning throughout the entire body. Dr. Browning and his colleagues will next study to see whether these changes that occur in liver metabolism as a result of carbohydrate restriction could help people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Previous research has shown, as we stated before, a correlation between carbohydrate intake and NAFLD. And after that, more speculative, CLA, a common fat that you can find in many, on many retail shelves. Now, CLA seemed to improve non-alcoholic fatty liver disease but this was done in animals and it was in relations to high fructose diets. 
So that holds some promise too that, it, that is out there that CLA may also benefit uh, NAFLD uh, with or without uh, high fructose corn syrup or high fructose diets, we have need to be seen in the future. I hope this helps. We really covered it really, really fast. A few great research articles. Vitamin E over and over again for NAFLD has been validated by other research, on, independent researchers, I should say, on top of that one research article itself. Again, I apologize for speaking fast. I just really do hope this helps. DOI citations will be listed. And again, thank you very, very much for listening once again. Ralph Hurt Channel, signing off.